Several years ago, YouTuber X-Ray Tony B made an excellent uh, video that I will link to here uh, describing how to uh, connect up one of these cheapo uh, digital frequency counters you can get on eBay to an inexpensive RF signal generator like this BK Precision uh, 2005B I, I have here. Um, and I bought uh, used from my buddy Cody uh, for not much money a while ago. Thanks, Cody. It's working good. Uh, the idea is if you make this mod, you have uh, accurate uh, digital readout you can use and you won't have to rely on the analog dial on the front of this thing, which on this unit is out a little bit at the low frequencies and out quite a bit more at, at the higher ones. Uh, these RF generators have been around for a long time. They're obviously all made in the same factory somewhere, uh, but they're sold with different names up here on the nameplate. Obviously, there's this BK Precision 2005 A and B. Uh, there's uh, Leader, there's Lodestar, Instec, uh, GRG 450, uh, 450B, uh, and of course, X-Ray Tony B's own uh, Tenma uh, 72585. Uh, the schematic for these can be a little hard to find, so I will link that up uh, in the description uh, below. Uh, the problem is, if you are using this signal generator to align a radio, you have probably turned the output RF waveform way down with this uh, attenuator control so as not to trigger the automatic volume control circuitry in the radio you are aligning. And if you do that, then the, the signal uh, coming out lacks enough oomph to actually drive the, the frequency counter. So X-Ray Tony B's solution to this problem was to tap off the uh, unattenuated signal inside the, the unit and bring it out to an external BNC jack on the side of the case. Uh, he came out the back, I, I've come out the side with both the signal and uh, power because I didn't want to bend this uh, uh, coax. And, and by the way, am I the only one that thinks this um, attenuator label should say signal level or something? Because if I set this to high, it makes it seem like I'm putting in more attenuation and I'd expect the signal level to go down. And if I set it to low, I would think I'm putting in less attenuation and I expect the signal level to go up. But that's not how the way it, it actually works. Uh, if you have put it on high, you get the high amplitude range. And if you put it in low, you get the low amplitude range, which has always bugged me. But uh, I don't know. I'm also left-handed, so maybe it's, it's just me. Uh, anyway, uh, as I said, you can get these uh, frequency counters on eBay. Um, for like eight to 15 bucks. This one was more like eight because uh, it came as a kit, but I'm an uh, old uh, Heathkit Elecraft guy and I like to solder, so that was fine uh, for me. The only problem with this kit is that uh, the counter only goes up to uh, 50 megahertz and the, the signal generator can go up to about 150 megahertz, but I never work that high or if I do, uh, in the odd chance, I can drag out the fluke or a scope or something and, and check the dial uh, manually. It won't be as convenient, but, you know, be able to do the work. Uh, the design for this originally comes from a German ham, ham uh, Wolfgang Wolf Buscher, uh, who is Delta Lima 4 Yankee Al he Hotel Fox. Uh, and of course, as soon as he uh, generously published his uh, uh, design on the web, uh, he was immediately ripped off by several groups in China, uh, uh, making uh, his um, uh, design as uh, kits and as pre-assembled units and selling them on eBay and elsewhere and making money for themselves and not giving him credit, which I think kind of sucks, but he seems to be okay with it. So that's, you know, very uh, nice of him. Uh, his website can be a little hard to find too, so I will link that up in the description below, uh, mostly because it has a great uh, um, explanation of how to use the built-in menu system uh, uh, inside this uh, uh, frequency counter, which is good for turning off the automatic power save mode, uh, which blanks the display after a while, which was a feature added for uh, ham radio QRP work, or how to zero out any a fixed offset that's being added to the true frequency before it's displayed, which is a feature also used in ham radio work to like uh, uh, zero out the effect of a local BFO uh, or something. But if either of those get turned on in this application, it messes up the display and, and uh, you don't want that. So it's nice to know how to turn it off. Uh, X-Ray Tony B did a great uh, job uh, with his video. So I'm, uh, 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 but he kind of went a little fast through the construction part. So I thought I would make this tribute video and show how I did it and um, uh, show the mistakes I made and, and also uh, some of the uh, differences in my approach. I think I found an easier way, for example, to get uh, power than the buck converter he used. Uh, I also made the signal and uh, power lines detachable inside the case so you can like remove the whole case in the future if you need to without um, having to uh, uh, remove jacks or anything and stuff like that. Uh, so thanks, X-Ray Tony B, for the inspiration. Uh, by the way, he runs a great channel. You should all subscribe, especially if you're a loser like me who enjoys watching old stereos get repaired. Uh, it's great. 
Um, and I guess that's it by way of introduction. So as Jackie Gleason used to say, and away we go. Okay, so here's the box with the lid off. There's the, the front of the thing, and this is the back. Uh, but first of all, it's uh, martini time because uh, coronavirus. Mm. Which makes technical decisions much easier. And anyway, if I flip this over so you can see it, I went in on this board here with a BNC patch cable. I just cut the end off and then grabbed a rando small value um, capacitor. So that's where that taps in. And I looked at it on the scope and the signal's okay. And so now we want to bring this thing out the, out the back. And um, I hate soldering these BNC things, so I got a bunch of these little um, patch cords here. I want to want to make this pretty long. So here's another uh, uh, male to female um, patch cord so we can attach this here and make this longer. And then I have um, a bunch of these uh, sex reversers. These are uh, uh, whatever female to female. I'll put one of those on here. And then then this will be the, the panel jack, which takes a D-hole. i got to figure out how to make that happen. But, you know, another sip of the martini will probably... Mm. Help that eat it. That's Old Tom Gin, by the way, which is a very interesting style. It's kind of Swedish. It's nice. Not Swedish. Swedish. Um, and then I think I'll bring it out uh, this side of the cabinet. So I'll measure back how far this is and how far up I want it. And we'll bring it out down here below the um, um, oscillator coils. And then I'll figure out how to keep this off of here. So let's mark the case and try to drill a hole. So unfortunately, Mr. Cheapo Drill Press doesn't have enough clearance to uh, drill this. So we're going to have to do it with a hand drill. So I've just uh, clamped the case to the side of the workbench here. expect this to go through or it shouldn't go through because the D needs to stop and it does so now we can just kind of nibble out that side we hope with a, a nibbler tool which looks like it's, it's kind of dirty <laughs> kind of looks like that Okay, it's an ugly hole, but it is kind of working if you rotate it to the right position. It catches on one of those hooks. I got lucky. This is a uh, 5 8 wrench. Let's tighten this up. Boy, that's pretty darn secure. Okay, well, ugly hole, but... Looks like it's going to be okay. So at the same time I bought the frequency counter kit on eBay, I bought this um, case for it and I just used the measurements of the board which were in the frequency counter listing to, to get the case. So this was supposed to be the perfect size and that would have been a great idea. It had these nice uh, recessed um, screw holes and everything. Uh, except that when it actually arrived it turned out that uh, the, the screw supports were these huge plastic uh, barrels that went from one end to the other. So I, I wound up dremeling out these and uh, then actually um, 
that meant I lost the, the top screw holes and I wound up using a piece of scotch tape to hold this thing in here. So it's the usual meatball uh, work I am uh, famous for. And then this goes on here and, and I actually chipped a piece out of the bottom, but you know, that'll be down. And then this little hole lets you press the function button on the frequency counter, especially to turn off the, the auto sleep mode. Uh, but but this worked out okay. Cut the side off of here, and um, that's for power. And then cut cut this side panel off, and this is for um, uh, the BNC jack. I, I think these make these for for kits like you know garage door openers or something. It seems like it was more of a remote controly kind of kind of thing. Anyway, and then these long I've got these long screws, and they go through here and hold the hold the board down. So let's talk about power. The frequency counter wants to run on anything from 7 to 9 volts, so I've been powering it with the 9-volt uh, battery lashed up to an adapter plug and turn the lights off here. And if I plug this in, you know, that all, that all works great. Um, but really, when this is installed on the top of the frequency counter, what you really want is turn the switch on and have it come on. So you want to power this from the frequency counter. So we're fortunate when you're building a signal generator, even a cheap one, it's advantageous to put in a uh, old fashioned linear power supply as opposed to using a switching one or a wall wart or something. And that's what we have here. The power comes in, goes to a transformer, full wave rectifier, this Pi network voltage dropper and winds up here uh, on top of this Zener diode, which I assume is used for voltage regulation. So I decided to pick the power off right here and I measured it, there's about 15 volts DC here. And obviously we'd like to get this down to seven or nine volts DC. Uh, which is what this thing wants. Now this thing is rated to use uh, 50 milliamps if you look at the spec sheet, but when I measure it, yes, there's an inrush current of 40 or 45 milliamps, but uh, it's running um, current is about 24 milliamps. So uh, after a little Ohm's law and some fiddling, I decided to use a 270 ohm half watt resistor because that's what I had lying around, even though that size is a bit of overkill because the drop only dissipates about a tenth of a watt. So where do we tap in physically? So here this is again, here's the front, and if we tip it up on end, we have the uh, uh, power transformer, and then the, uh, the Pi network uh, voltage divider, and then the Zener diode is that little guy right there. So here's a better view, and, and here's the the Zener diode where we want to take the power off. And if you'll notice these, these no stuffs here, places where they could have put a component and didn't, there are nice holes through the circuit board. And um, if I take this light and shine it around the back, we can follow the trace from the um, Zener da -da 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 to this no stuff here. And then this is the ground plane and there's a no stuff here. And they have, so if I take the ball of solder off the, both the back of these, I've got a place to tap in and get my um, uh, 15 volts. I can actually stick the resistor in, uh, in this hole here once I desolder it. And then we'll run the wires out to a, a power jack on the side. So let's open this up and measure the actual voltage under load. Perfect. Okay, change of plan. So in all the fiddling to put in the power supply, I broke off my signal tap here uh, where I went in on this board, which is uh, the emitter of Q2, I think, where actually Tony B said he was gonna go in, but in the end, he didn't mention it, but he actually went in here um, uh, at the input to the um, uh, signal level pot, uh, which also means he went through R9, which is another 390 ohm resistor, so he uh, gets a little lower uh, amplitude. However, it was mechanically much stronger, so I think I'm going to copy him and take it off of here as well. Now, he had put a terminal strip here through this convenient hole, which is grounded, and that would have been swell, but I have uh, my... Uh, output BNC connector right in this position. I think it will clear, but it'd be tight and I worry about it shorting all the time. So I'm gonna try to put a terminal strip here. The downside is I'll have to bring a ground out somehow. Um, 
this is a short screw that goes into the plastic that holds the front plate on. So we'll see how that goes. Here's what I came up with, and I think it turned out pretty good. I was able to mount a two lug terminal strip on that screw, and, and it held okay. And then it turned out that uh, uh, signal ground and chassis ground are the same, so I didn't need to run a special wire uh, for that. And so this is ground, and I connected the braid of the uh, coax to that. Um, and I covered it in solder, which makes a nice firm support to hold the very delicate inner conductor that carries the signal. I used a 50 volt uh, 0.01 microfarad capacitor. That's the same value X-ray 20B used, except I didn't use a big honking 630 volt uh, axial, uh, you know, uh, radio capacitor. Um, just one of these uh, little guys, because the voltages here only swing through about two volts at the low end of the scale. And as you turn it up, the frequency gets up, the voltage goes down even farther to, to like less than a volt of peak to peak. And then a big blob of uh, hot glue to uh, hold everything. The um, Capacitive reactance of this at uh, 100 kilohertz, which is the low end of the scale, uh, low end of what this generator can do, is only like 159 ohms. So this shouldn't uh, interfere too much with, uh, uh, with the signal. And I've looked at it on the scope, and it looks pretty good. A slight drawback to picking off the signal from this position at the input to the level pot, as opposed to directly off of Q2, is that it is slightly affected uh, by the... Uh, level pod as you turn it, but uh, not very much, not enough to really make a difference to the frequency counter, so we're good there. And here's what the final product looks like when everything is tucked back into the case and it's all put together. I uh, went ahead and shortened up the power cord on this side so it's neater. Put another piece of Velcro under here so now it's even and on there pretty good. And I went ahead and got a uh, L-shaped um, BNC connector to bring that uh, uh, coax right up. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how this all came out. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and uh, drink lots of martinis, and we'll see you next time.